Hello everyone, this is Jeff at High Fashion Sewing, Bernina Jeff, and this month I'm doing a uh, FTCU software uh, class, and we're going to be doing one on a snowflake. Trevor Conkergood did one, so uh, I'm going to elaborate on that, and uh, then you can follow along with me, and uh, we're going to go a step further. We're actually going to go to the internet and find an image, and use that image to be our base of our uh, snowflake. So here we go. So first off, I would like you to watch Trevor Conkergood's video. It's about 25 minutes or so on the uh, snowflake. And this is how you get there. When you get to your Floriani Software Club, you go to blogs and news, slide all the way down to club weekly video archive. Now we're going to select that. We're going to come down here. It says the 2021 weekly archive archive and we're going to go to this is another good one to watch too is this auto digitizing hints but we're going to do this lace snowflake so let's select that and trevor will come on and show you his version of the snowflake we're not going to do that because you can do that on your own so i'm going to stop this and then i'm going to go to the software itself ftcu software and we're going to actually produce this snowflake. This is a one-of-a-kind snowflake, just like they fall from the sky. And uh, you can make your very own. And uh, I'll show you how to go find the image now. So to find the image, we're going to just go to a internet browser. So my internet browser right now is on the uh, RNK. So I'm going to go to plus. And on the search tab, I'm going to type in snowflake image. And I actually typed in Snowflake SVG, hoping I could find an SVG file, which is probably the cleanest type file to use. But none of those are free. But we're going to just go ahead and use that as our search. And here is a big, long list of different snowflakes. And you can click down here and see more images. So let's let this build a little bit. And if you hover over them, it tells you what type of file it is. And this one right here, we're going to use the very first one, and it is a PNG file. They're not SVG free. If you try to go to get an SVG, you're going to get into a website that's going to make you give a credit card number and maybe start a free trial that you forget to uh, you know, unsubscribe to. So I'm just going to use, we have software that can use this file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that file. And then I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to see save image as I don't use any of these save things down here. I always use a right click and save image as and I'm going to save it in a place where I'm going to find it. And the place I find it's called my scans, you could call it your pictures or whatever. So I'm going to call this snowflake four. So it doesn't interrupt with any of my other ones. So Snowflake 4, it's a PNG image, which will work just fine. So I'm saving that. That's in my scans. I, and I don't care about this website anymore. I'm out of there and I'm out of my search. And I'm even gonna close the RNK Software Club. So actually my computer will run a little faster now and it's not working so hard. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new workspace with this new uh, piece of uh, paper with the ear turned down on it and now I have a new workspace. It's empty so we're, we're, we need to get that file and we're going to use the wizard and we're going to use this orange wizard cap, left click on it, come over to the new wizard, auto wizard advanced, left click on the purple hat and now we need to select an image. We don't want to select any of this default image. We want to go to where the image we just saved. It's on my desktop. It's in my scans. And it was called Snowflake 4. These are all images I've brought in from the internet and uh, have done different uh, digitizing and uh, designs out of. So here's my Snowflake number four. I'm going to select it and hit open. And now the rest of the wizard is going to open up. So here is the initial right here, and here's a result. I thought, well, I don't want the black in there, so I'm going to select the black and remove it. 
And then when I remove it, it's not a snowflake anymore. So I'm going to have to redo. So I'm going to undo it. And I'm going to see what happens if I just use it as is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I've done this, so I know it's going to work. So keep on following. We're going we're gonna to do a little bit of editing uh, with this new auto digitizer and show you how this function works. So I wish I had the Jeopardy uh, tune on right now because this takes 25 or 30 seconds to... The software is looking for images and shapes and it's converting all of these little colors and pixels into a shape that the software can use. So it's doing a lot of work right now. Sometimes you'll have this hourglass, sometimes you'll hear, see it spinning, but it always says not responding. Trevor says that should be saying, I'm thinking, do not click on a single thing. So if it says not responding, just hold off on your clicker finger and not click anything because it's just going to take a little time. So the result kind of looks like it's got raindrops falling on it. So that's our result. And you can play around with your tolerance. I don't usually. And then I'm going to hit next. And now it's broken that image into all its pieces and colors. So the only color I want is this red one. So these X's, I'm just going to X out all these white colors. So those are all the little pieces of white. And then after I do the white, I'm going to X out all the black. And it's going to leave me nothing but the red to work with. And that's exactly what I wanted. I have a couple little lines here. <clears throat> Those shouldn't be much of an issue. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And I can add an outline at this point. I'm not going to do anything else as far as a border or an outline. I guess I could add a border at this point, but I'm going to do that later. So I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to hit finish. And it's going to give me a representation of this snowflake. And if I look at it in my transformation, transform, it is 8.53 inches by 8.53 inches. That's a pretty large area. So I'm going to convert that to 4.9 inches because if I have a 5 by 7 hoop, it's going to fit in there. And I'm going to make sure the height is 4.5 inches. 4.9 excuse me I could have clicked this as maintain aspect ratio but I forgot so now it's going to work for a minute to change that size from eight and a half inches to 4.9 and uh, again depending upon your computer sometimes these are pretty quick sometimes they're not so let's let it work and uh, it's going to come in with this default fill so this is our fill type it's a regular pattern number one now I'm going to double click on my magnifier with the left. That fills the screen to the to a usable area. And I'm going to put it on 3D and then click off of my workspace. So now you can see it's it's done a fill stitch. And that's a regular fill stitch. Um, I'm thinking that's a little clunky, a little heavy for a uh, um, snowflake. So I'm going to select it by clicking on it. I'm going to deselect 3D because I like to work in the uh, work mode. And instead of a fill, I'm going to come down here to my bottom row. I could do a run. I could do a run motif. I actually did some run motifs on this and it looked gorgeous. But I'm going to do a steel. So I'm going to left click on that. And it tells me there's some recommendations, so that's okay. I'm, I'm all right with that. So now instead of a fill, it, it traced all the outside edge. And I'm thinking this is going to make a wonderful stitch out. Now, the stitch width of the steel is a default at 2.5 millimeters. I'm going to make it a 2 millimeter and apply it. Leave the density and everything else the same. It'll be great. So the warnings, just there's a the certain default. So if we want to, if it doesn't stitch out well, we'll fix that later. So there's two kinds of embroiders in my mantra. There's embroiders that do a stitch out sample and there's embroiders that wish they did so i always do samples of my stitch outs and if they don't turn the way i want i come back to the software or i try to figure them out on the sewing machine all right so we have this guy and it's selected 
Now we're going to come up here to the middle second row where it says create outlines. Let's click on that and we want to outline. I tried to outline at zero and that spacing is no good. So I found that 2.5 outline spacing on this one looks pretty good. That's a quarter of an inch. And we only want one layer, one ripple. I'll leave everything else the same. And now you're going to see that uh, it's going to build an outline for us. This outline is going to be where the mesh fills because if we want freestanding lace, we need to mesh behind this, stitch out a mesh, and then stitch this on it. And then we need two of these outlines because one's going to be a fill and the other one's going to be a steel outline or some sort of an outline to hold it all together. So we are going to uh, make sure that that artwork is selected. Let's see about all items. So here's our artwork here. So I'm going to come over here on the sequence. What I did is I, this guy was closed up, so I hit the plus sign by the eyeball. So I'm going to select the artwork. So only the artwork is selected now. I'm going to hit this copy option and paste option. So now there's two artworks right there. And those two artworks are right on top of each other. So I'm going to take the top artwork, and I am going, coming down to my bottom row, and it says mesh fill. So I'm going to click on Mesh Fill, and then way over here on the right-hand side of Stitch Type is three little dots. Click on those three little dots, and then click on this down little arrow here, and I want this mesh pattern that looks angles. And I'm going to hit OK, and now that mesh pattern is on top of my uh, stitches of my uh, snowflake which is fine for now. I'm going to send that to the very beginning of my stitch out. I do that by this little arrow right here. Uh, so move to the very first stitch out. So now the mesh will stitch first and now the, so the uh, um, snowflake will stitch on top of the mesh. So the next step is to put our border on this or the steel border. I'm going to go to artwork number two, select it, come down to my bottom row, one, two, three over, which is the steel. And I'm going to leave this at 2.5. I actually stitched one out at 2.0 and it uh, was a little narrow. It will not stitch out quite as big as it shows when you do a 3D. And I want that to stitch number two. So I'm going to go to bring this to the very first one and then tell it to go down one. So my lace fill or the mesh fill goes first, the outside goes second, and then the uh, snowflake stitches last. So that there is your snowflake right there. Let's look at it in 3D. And this, this right here will stitch out nicely, but maybe you want to attach it to a tree or something. So you want to have a little bit of a hook on here, or a little hole to hook it up with. Well, Trevor showed a way how to steal a part. So we are going to go to our library of free designs. I'm going to look in December. And I know in December 2020, click designs, he's got a large snowflake and it's got a hanger hole right. So I'm going to drop that onto my workspace so I can steal that little hanger hole. And I'm going to select all those items. So that's all these guys here. If I plus that, oh, let's unplus it. Okay. I need to break it apart. So there, I just selected that that newest guy. And now here is a ungroup. So I'm going to ungroup it and click off of my design. And I'm going to click right onto that little holder. So I just selected the uh, little holder. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna grab him and put him where I want it on my on mine. And I'm gonna tweak that out. I'm gonna enlarge that and uh, move it down. So I'm gonna use my magnifier. I'm gonna enlarge this area. I drew a box around it. And now come back to my select tool, and I can move him down to where you just have most of the circle showing and the rest of these are going to be sewn underneath. Now that has to stitch first so I'm going to tell it to stitch first by clicking this move first 
and boom, there we go. It will stitch first and it will look great. Now, I'm gonna double click my magnifier so everything is selected. I need to get rid of this. I, all I did was steal the whole holder. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on the screen and draw a box around this guy. And when it selects, it will only select what's 100% in the box. So everything behind there is gonna stay where it should. And I'm gonna hit my delete key on my screen and hopefully I didn't delete. See, I didn't delete anything behind there because that wasn't part of the 100% selection. So there we have, we have the holder. This guy is ready to stitch out and it actually stitches out gorgeous. I did it this morning. And if you'll watch Trevor's uh, um, video, he uh, uses a product that I actually carry in the store. And I'm gonna take the uh, camera off of the tripod here and show you what we have. Now, if I was going to stitch this out, you can use it save to sew, or you can use save as and put it on a USB stick, put it to your sewing machine and stitch it out. So here we go, I'm taking the camera off, a little wiggly now.